The enduring exploits of James Bond and other iconic spies have been celebrated on screen and in print for more than 50 years. Now, a traveling exhibit celebrating the history of real espionage is on display at Pacific Science Center, and it's got some of the coolest gadgets and secret things you were never supposed to see. Well, Spy, the secret world of espionage, is an encapsulation of the gadgetry and the people and the stories of some of the most fascinating events in the last 75 years of our history and of spycraft. The role of gadgets, of spy technology, the things we love from James Bond, they existed for one reason, and that was to get the secrets from the spy who had access and stole them to get them to an intelligence service so they could be analyzed. This may appear to be nothing but a shortened ice climbing axe, but in the 1930s, Stalin wanted to eliminate his most vocal critic, who was Leon Trotsky. They infiltrated an assassin who on the afternoon of August the 20th, 1940, drove this ice axe two and three quarters inches into the head of Leon Trotsky. He died 26 hours later, and it became the crime of the century. This umbrella may appear quaint, but it's actually a very cleverly designed assassination weapon. What it shot was a tiny pellet, smaller than a BB, that was cross-drilled to hold rice and poison. And in the mid-1970s, a Bulgarian dissident in London, standing at the foot of the Waterloo Bridge, was about to enter a taxi cab, and when he felt someone walk by and poke him in the thigh with an umbrella. Uh, he went home that night, was not feeling well. He died two days later. The heyday of spy pigeons was in the 19-teens in World War I, but there was actually a CIA operation in the 1970s that developed a smaller camera, more manageable by the pigeon, but the purpose of the operation was never to classify. One of the most difficult cities to operate in during the Cold War was in Moscow. And if the CIA wanted to contact an agent, they'd try to drive a car through in the middle of the night and toss something out of the window. Well, what better to toss than a dead rat? And the idea was to put the secrets in his stomach, and when you tossed it out, who would pick up a dead rat? The explosion of Pan Am 103 over Lockerbie, Scotland in 1989 was almost a mystery we didn't solve. And then a farmer, some 80 miles away, detected this tiny piece of a circuit board embedded in the label of a t-shirt. They eventually tracked that to a tourist shop in Cyprus, where the owner said, well, two years ago, two men came in with a suitcase and just said, fill it up with t-shirts. It doesn't make any difference the size. And those turned out to be the two Libyan intelligence officers. A CIA officer with a code name Mr. Orkin was able to match that tiny fragment of circuit board to a timer purchased for explosive purchases by the Libyan government. Had the explosion happened over water, we would have never been able to determine the source. When people leave the exhibit, I'd like them to think, wow. I have just seen some of the most incredible artifacts they will ever see in my life. I would have never been able to see this array of gadgetry that in many ways it's even wilder than what I see in the movie. There's no need to infiltrate the Pacific Science Center to catch spy the secret world of espionage. It'll be on display through September 1st, and you can find out more information on tickets and upcoming special events by hacking this website, pacificsciencecenter.org. Bo, what's, what's wrong? This show will self-destruct in three weeks.